What's up guys, welcome back to the tech unboxing video. Today we're looking at the PS Vita Hori Grip. Now, this is a licensed PlayStation product, but it's essentially a little grip case you can put on your PlayStation Vita Slim. That's the 2000 model, and you have access to some back buttons and additional shoulder buttons instead of using the touchpad on the back. Now, I was actually looking for a Vita case where I can kind of hold it more comfortably, but also use some secondary L2, R2 triggers in the back. But the ones on Amazon were kind of cheap and they were selling in two different pieces and I'll show up on screen here, but it's either you get just the case and then you get additional buttons that are actually the triggers or you get one big thing like this. But the Hori one, believe it or not, is actually very expensive. If you look on eBay, they're selling all of them all of them are selling for above $100. And if you want it with the box, it's going for even close to 150. Now I lucked out. I'm usually on Facebook market looking for things I don't need. And I saw this and the guy selling it was offering her for 40. And I was like, okay, this is dumb to pass up. So I said, as I always do, would you do it for 30? And he said, yeah. And I picked it up, checked it out. And it is everything that I need. And it's everything that I expected. So let's go ahead and unbox it. You can unbox it from the top, but it's a little more steps included. So we'll just go ahead and open it from the bottom here. And I'm definitely pumped to get the box with this as well. Not in the best condition, but it is still a box product. And I don't know what it launched like, but we have the controller here, or the case, and then instruction manual. And this is, everything's in Japanese. It was imported from Japan. But if you look on eBay, those ones are usually going to come from Japan as well. You have instructions here on how to attach it and what to do, but it is a piece of plastic, so it should not be that confusing. And kudos to the guy I got it from. I don't think he knew exactly what he was selling. If he did, I'm pretty sure he would have listed it for way higher of a price, but he used it for a PlayStation 4 remote play, which is one of the bigger sellers for this thing. And he said, yeah, he has no use for it anymore and it still works. And that's all I needed to hear. So here is the actual grip case itself. It's a pretty, chunky boy compared to the PlayStation Vita Slim, but it does have some nice grooves to put your hand in. It has the triggers in the back. You can see it punches in. And then it has some paddles as well. And all this is doing is just registering as if you were touching on the back of the touchpad in the back. So let's go ahead and pull out the PS Vita itself. And again, this is a console that I recently just fell back in love with. I'm actually playing Persona 4 Golden on it right now, and it is a great little handheld. Definitely deserves more praise. But this is the back touchpad that is getting replaced. And you can see here, it's kind of hard to see the reflection, but it's only about this area that gets tracked. But you see, it's a pretty slim device to hold in your hand. So I can definitely understand the comfort aspect of this. So let's go ahead and Put it in the case and see how it fits. So it fits snug right there. You take this and close it up. You do lose access to the game cartridge when you plug it in, but there's a nice little pad here, a foam pad that protects it. And you see you still have your camera access, you still have your charging and your aux, and wow, this is actually a lot more comfortable than I thought. It feels very sturdy, no looseness. Now let's go ahead and pick a game that has the back touchpad and see how it feels with that. And the one that comes to mind for me is Metal Gear Solid 2 or 3. Okay, so I want to find a game that shows one use of the back touchpad, and this is Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. Now, this is one of those games that doesn't require just a tap, it requires more of a drag. So if you were to aim here, and let's go first person mode, as soon as you drag, any direction, but on the right side, he leans to the right, drag to the left, he leans to the left. If you drag both, he peeks up. So essentially it's just a drag here. But because you don't have that drag option, you just have a touch option, you can't really use this for that setting. Now, yeah, it is more comfortable to hold, but you're locked out of that back option here. So you can't really do that. Let's see if I hold here, hold this down. Tapping these doesn't really do anything, even if I tap both. So a game like this wouldn't really benefit. And if anything, it would kind of limit you on what you're able to do naturally without the controller. 
So regardless of what I said before, this grip is mostly used for PS Remote Play. You saw when I tried the PS Video game, and I also tried Gravity Rush as well. But a lot of the stuff that uses the back touchscreen is mostly gesture-based compared to single button presses that this controller provides. But PS Remote Play is what it's for, so we're gonna go ahead and try that and see how it is. So I'm connected to my PS4 in the other room right now. We have God of War up and running. This is streaming before streaming became cool. We'll go ahead and try the buttons and see how they feel. So the back ones, I believe, are supposed to be the stick clicks okay so we're not going to be paying too much attention at the performance because it is streaming but let's go ahead we have l1 r1 nothing for l2 nothing for r2 okay so it looks like it's mapped here instead i wonder if there's a way to remap it settings touchscreen turn that off interesting okay let's go ahead and see if it requires gestures nothing so we are playing god of war but looks like it is not compatible so let's find a game that is okay next up we have metal gear solid phantom pain and based off some Reddit threads, this should support the use for the back touchscreen or touchpad to have L2, R2, and L3, R3. Actually, yeah, you can see right there. Let's just go ahead and drop into... So already, using R2 and L2, we're able to go through the menus. We're able to use the back one to zoom in and out. So let's go ahead and side off. And we're not gonna really do the mission. We're just gonna see how it operates. I know I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, I'm a wall and maybe 20 feet away from a PS4, but this is actually, I don't feel, much latency at all. It's definitely not one on one, and you see some graphical stuff going on, but it is pretty smooth. And I know that has nothing to do with the controller itself. That's going on to a different topic, but it's nice. So we are on the ground. We have our aim button right here, shoot button right here, and then we have our shoulder and our binocular. And if we want to switch sides, we touch that back one. I like how it shows at the top. I can see how that's a little annoying sometimes. And you can probably disable that somehow in the settings. We got sprint button. Cool. Cool. This is actually really, really dope. All right. Yeah, this is definitely way more comfortable. Now let's go ahead and take it out of the case and see how that would feel playing here. Now, the issue with playing it without a case is knowing where the top and bottom are. For example, I'm hitting the bottom now. If I just go a little bit to the top, it's just not comfortable, right? And we want to sprint, I can hold here. Like I, I'm trying to reach for the top, but sometimes you touch here instead and here. It's just hard to tell without actually having a physical button or knowing exactly where to touch because it all feels the same. It's all smooth. So yeah, for a game like this that supports it, and there is a Reddit thread that has games that support actual touch on the back. You saw that God of War doesn't support it. Some PlayStation Vita games may support it, but again, I thought I could use it mostly for Vita, but it turns out it's mostly for remote play. It would be cool if some games do support it on Vita. That would be nice, but based off the ones that I own and I've tried, they're more drag-based inputs compared to just touch. Yeah, guys, this is a really, really cool case. <laughs> really expensive. I got a really good deal, and that's actually the only reason I bought it. I actually don't remote play much, but I do have some PS4 games I never finished, like God of War, I never finished that. So if I can just be here or in bed and playing it, if I don't mind the not great resolution frame rate, it's a, it's a pretty good method.
and this just makes it even more comfortable. Would I recommend buying this at the price that's listed on eBay or Amazon? No, I wouldn't just because it's way too expensive. At that point, you can buy something on Amazon that is cheaper and it's not licensed by Sony, but it is still a good deal. So that is my review of the Hori PS4 remote play controller for the PS Vita Slim. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys already have one, if you guys have used one in the past. I don't know how well the Vita may do remote play for the PS5 or if it even does that. I'm hoping it does, but if I had one, I would test it. But again, pretty cool way to do remote play. There's so many other ways to do remote play other than the PS Portal, which is, from what I hear, not good. But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you wanna support the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.